I want you to learn how to fail and win anyway. You got to learn this one now. I want you to learn how to fail and win anyway. Because this is what you're going to have to do. Because let me tell you something. As successful as you've been up to this point, once again, I congratulate you to the fullest. But let me tell you something. You're about to get to fail. Because you, you're finna taste life like it really is. See, them people up here, they tired of buying you laptops and iPhones and sneakers and all that. They hoping with everything in them that this degree flips the script. That you one day buy them a TV and another house. If, if, look, I got seven kids. All seven of my kids either they graduated or they in college now. You know why I send them to school? So they can pay me back. That's the only reason. I just, I just want my money back. If they could just give me a ROI, a return on investment. Give me the money I dumped into y'all. Just give it back to me. You know how much paper I don't spend on these kids of mine? But you gotta learn how to fail and win anyway. You got to overcome. So now here's the lesson. Behind every moment of adversity, every single moment of adversity in your life, two things are going to happen. There's going to be a lesson and there's going to be a blessing. You got to wait on both of them. If you let the adversity crumble, if you focus on the adversity, you will lay there and wallow in the fact that you have failed. Because failure coming. But life is 10% what happened to you. It's 90% what you do about it. Man, so what you fail. It's not really failure though. Every time you fail, it's a valuable, taught, learned experience that makes you greater for later on. They didn't tell you this at ASU. Once again, I can only use me. December 21st, I hosted Miss Universe. Do you know, in that moment of failure, you know what really happened to you? The biggest mistake on television. Do you know one of my prayers? Because every morning I have a gratitude prayer. I have a list of 89 things that I read before I start my day. I don't wake up without reading it. I don't go to bed. It's on my iPhone. It's under my notes section. I have a gratitude prayer. Because one of the principles of success is the more you're grateful for, the more he gives you to be grateful for. Look, I don't know the four five scriptures. I done done one of them already, so I ain't got but three more. But them four five ones that I know, they four five good ones, though. They got me here today. So now in gratitude, when you show God gratitude, he give you more stuff to be grateful for. So I wake up in the morning, I thank him for a list of things. In my gratitude prayer, I put in several requests. One of my requests, because I have businesses overseas, one of my requests was, I was asking God to increase my global persona and reputation. Now, I didn't appreciate the way he did. I did not care for the route he took. I was really looking upside God's head. Hey man, because the day after, my name on social media was Google two billion times in 48 hours. I was on the front page of 64 countries newspaper. He had increased my global persona and reputation. But it happened in a moment of adversity. And see, this is how God worked, man. This is why you got to grab this for me now. It happened in a moment of adversity. I shamed myself. Man, it was humiliating. I had death threats. We got security. My wife can tell you. With her fine self sitting over there. What's up, girl? I see you. Love you back. Stay with me. Thank God for that over there. Every day. If he ain't done nothing for me, he gave me that day over there. That was the adversity. We got security at our house now, don't we? 
I have guards that come to my house. That's in my yard behind my gate. We had serious death threats. Columbia, Columbia was so upset. You know, them boys, they sell drugs. They got drug cartel over there. You got, you know, when they mad at you, you got to pay attention. You know, this ain't, can't just play them off. You know, there ain't no skin head. I had death threats. I had so many memes done about me. Some of y'all did the memes yourself. I had friends on TV that I thought was my friend just doing memes about me. Man, just, it was a week of just agonizing humiliation. Every newspaper, every morning show wanted to interview me. I wouldn't do no interview. There was some adversity that hit my life. And as people was trying to make fun of it, my family was in pain. We were suffering. But what I tell you though, behind every moment of adversity, there's two things. There's a lesson and there's a blessing. Here was the lesson. They ain't going to get me like that no more. What you put in that teleprompter has to match what you put on the card and it's got to coordinate with the IBF that I had in my ear. Because everything on that monitor and everything in my ear and on that card, the next name, according to the teleprompter, was Miss Columbia. Miss Columbia! Oh, it was a great moment. I went all the way in the back. Two minutes went by. Ain't nobody said nothing. Then they discovered it was a mistake. Then they said, we got to fix this. The guy in my ear said, we'll straighten it out in the morning. You. I walked out there myself. I decided. I'm walking back out there. The man in my ear said, where you going? What are you going to do? He said, we got to fix it. So I went out there and took the whole bullet myself. They changed the card from all three days rehearsal. They never did a runner-up because it was a new company. They did it different. Hey, they messed up everything. I took the bullet and the blame. Because my mama, the Sunday school teacher, and my daddy, the coal miner, was alive in it. Do the right thing. Be a man, own up. Now, that was the lesson in it for me. Now, the blessing. Hang on. Because you don't know what God going to do. A few weeks later, I had Miss Columbia on my talk show. Miss Columbia gave me the highest rating I've ever had in the history of my four-year-old talk show. Blessing number one. Blessing number two, T-Mobile called and paid me millions of dollars to do a Super Bowl commercial. A cha-ching they paid me so much money, I go out there next year and say the wrong name again. You got to wait and see what God got for you. I told my wife, I said, I always wanted a Super Bowl commercial. Said had one. They never gave me one. He gave me all of that. Increased my global persona. We now have villas in 12 countries. Free villas that we can go to. Eight bedroom villas. I can come for a month. Me and my family absolutely free. See what God do? You got to work through it. You got to work through the adversity. When adversity hits y'all and it's coming, remember there's a lesson and a blessing. You got me? All right, next thing I need for y'all to know. This is the third lesson. Quit asking God to make your life easy because he ain't going to do that. See, people, y'all go to church, man. Y'all got all these scriptures y'all memorize. Don't apply none of them to your life. God ain't finna make your life easy. Lord Jesus Lord, I don't want this on me. Sorry. Lord, take away all my worries. That's you worried. Lord, I don't want to, I don't want to do this. Lord, I'm so tired. Lord, help. What y'all doing? Quit asking God for that. You got to have some faith. See, listen to me. Faith don't make it easy. Faith makes it possible. You got to have faith, man. If you going to graduate and whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, you got to put some faith on it. You, you can get through with all this help. This, you you going to get your degree. And man, I can't tell you how big this is. But it's going to be a piece of sheepskin that's going to hang on your wall. You got to go do something. You got to get some faith in your life. Lord Jesus, I want my life to be easy. It ain't finna be easy. You're going to lose some loved ones along the way. 
you're going to not get the job you want. Somebody on your job one day going to come in there and hand you a slip of paper and tell you they don't even want you here no more. One of your companies is going to up and relocate and you ain't going to have the money or the resources to go with the company. You're going to go outside the club one day, your car going to be gone. You know, people steal, people steal, people steal. I didn't say repoed, I said stole. Your car going to be gone. You're going to drive up one day, your house going to be on fire. Lord, Lord, Lord. Now your house fully ablaze. What is you asking God to take the fire off your house for? Your house is already on fire. Lord Jesus, had him drive my car back up here. Thieves don't return cars. Faith don't make it easy, man. Faith make it possible. I rode a bike for four hours and a treadmill and a elliptical machine for four hours every day for a month to raise money for my bike. Somebody said, man, you're 59 years old. I know you can't believe it, but they said, you're 59 years old. How you going to do your radio show and ride this bike and treadmill for four hours? I don't know. I do not know. They said, man, that's impossible. Have you ever done that for four hours in a row? I said, no. They said, well, how you going to do it? I said, I'm going to use some faith. They said, what you mean, man? That's hard. I got it hard. But faith don't make it easy. Faith make it possible. You know what I did? I tried to raise a million dollars for my mentor account. I got on that bike, that treadmill, and lived for four hours every day for a whole month. Didn't miss a day. Only got off a bathroom break. All I wanted was a million, but here come God with his grace again. He be killing me with his grace. I tried to raise a million dollars. You know how much we raised? $1.8 million. That's that grace. That's that grace I'm telling you about. He give you above and beyond anything you can think on that. You got to put some faith. The last thing I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to let y'all go. Man, I want y'all to come across here and get this paper. Your greatness is in your imagination. Uh-oh. This is the heart. This is the one. This one, I'm closing with this one. This is the one where ain't nobody going to be able to follow me. See, whoever come up here next, I'm a headliner. Hard to go behind the headliner. Listen to this. Your greatness is in your imagination. Don't get this degree and forget about your imagination. I'm going to teach you something now. If you don't get nothing else I say, I need everybody's attention in here. Because this is for everybody. At my mama's church, there was a scripture that they used to read. And every time they read it, the church went crazy. And the scripture was about faith. The scripture said, faith is the substance of things hoped for. And the evidence of things not seen. Okay, you've all heard it. I heard it around the room. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Boy, when they said that in my mama's church, everybody in the building stood up and started clapping. I did too. But can I be real with you? I didn't even know what that meant. I just didn't. You know I mean? Let's be real. Come on now, that King James Version, that's a little rough sometimes. I got to get that Bible with about the four different translations in it because the King James, thither thou henceforth, furthermore, I'm out. I'm out. Man, my reading comprehension ain't ever been good. I went to high school and I hit 695 in my graduating class. I graduated 690. I gave them five people hell every time I saw them too. I didn't get that Bible verse until one day I was reading the book. And in this book, there was a quote by Albert Einstein. And he paraphrased that scripture. You know what I'm saying? He took it and put it in regular English where a dude like me could get it. You know what Albert Einstein said? Look at here now. He said, and lady said, what did he say? That's why I like working in front of y'all. He said, Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attraction. You've got to get this now. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming attraction. 
Man, do you know what that means? This was good news for me. I needed to hear this because you know what that meant? That meant everything you've ever imagined is real. But oh, it's not only real. It was God showing you a preview of a coming attraction that he has for you. Oh, man, trip me out now. Trip me out. Man, I almost start crying. Do you know how bad I needed that information? See, you've been thinking that your imagination is hopeless pokes. That it's just some, some thoughts, them random thoughts. But let me trip you out though. Have you ever, have you ever tripped on this before? Do you know that it is impossible for you to think an impossible thought? That is impossible. You ain't that smart. So how did that imagination get in your head? You want me to tell you? It was God. God put it there. He put it there to show you a preview of a coming attraction he has for you. This whole time you've been imagining stuff. It was God been showing you something he got for you. Your problem is though, you tell your imagination to the wrong people. See, if you want to kill your big dreams, tell it to a small minded person. Oh, 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 they shoot it down every time, don't they? Bet you ain't know I was going to say this, did you? Yeah, see, listen to me. This is what it's about now. See, quit telling everything to everybody. See, you go up and you tell it to your friends and your so-called loved ones. And because you think they care about you. You know how many of y'all that had a really wonderful idea? Some God showed you a business, a transfer, an opportunity, more, more education, more training. And man, this can change your world. You know how many of y'all that had this wonderful idea and you went in there and took it to that so-called friend and loved one and they shot it down. And because you thought they loved you, you thought they had your best interests at heart. So you believed them. Man, they was wrong. They was wrong. If God had a wanted it in their head, he'd have put it in their head. He put your imagination in your head. Don't let this degree mess up your imagination. Your greatness is in your imagination. Now let me tell you how this works. Everything you have in here today, everything you are, is simply because you imagined it and you believe it. You said you got a college degree. You're getting a degree today because you imagined it. But guess what? You believed it. Guess what? You're getting a degree today. You see how this works? Let's, let's make it real simple. How about that hairstyle on your head? How you think it got up there? See, everybody has style in here different. It's the one you imagined would look good on your head. You believed it. That's the one you got. How about that outfit you wore? That's the one. You know what? That outfit was just on a coat hanger somewhere. It was just dangling on a coat hanger. You imagined it on your body. You believed it would look good on you. That's the one you got. That car you drive. Anybody make you buy that car? There was a whole lot of cars on that lot. You went in there, you imagined yourself driving off the lot in that car. If you'd imagined the Rolls Royce, he'd have probably gave you that one. But no, you wanted the Prius. So now, you're driving off the lot in the Prius. See, I am a product of prayer. I'm a product of grace, mercy, forgiveness. My mama pray for me all the time. So here I stand. Product of that. But let me tell you something else though. I'm also a product of my imagination. See, I imagine some of that. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Your imagination is the evidence of things not seen. Because in your imagination, can't nobody see it but you. Now if you're in here and you think you too old to hear what I'm saying to you, my best example 
is Kentucky Fried Chicken. I don't know if you noticed the picture of the man on the bucket, but he old. He ain't 30 years old. Colonel old. Colonel had been telling people his whole life, I got the best chicken in the world. Ain't nobody believed him. They didn't give him a franchise till he was in his 60s. Kentucky Fried Chicken sell more chicken than anybody in the world. So if you're sitting in here thinking you're too old, I'd rather be rich and hit it in my 60s than to die poor and never have hit it at all. Now, last thing, and I'm out your way. Imagination is everything. It's the preview to life's coming to trash. Let me ask you a question. When you go to the movie, and you get that real early, if, and you get your popcorn and you sit down. Before the movie starts, what do they show you? A preview of a coming attraction. Have you ever seen a preview and the movie ain't come out? Oh, the movie coming out. Whether you go or not, the movie coming out. Whether you like the trailer or not, that movie do a hundred million at the box office. You might not like the actor. That actor get an Oscar for that movie. The moral of the story, the next time your heavenly father shows you a preview, go to the movie. You're probably starring in it. I bet you'll like it when you get down there. Appreciate y'all having me. Thank y'all. must walk by faith and not by sight. Sight is dangerous. I have come to teach you how to lift your eyes. Your eyes closed it. The problem sun is your eyes because your eyes always show what is your vision always show you what could be faith is the subscription of thing that you can hope for and its advance of thing that your eyes cannot see Our vision right is down, strength restricted, you the percent, but the vision related you to understood fortune of the future, this crash, must be careful not to be the excited about its past, because your past can be become your victim and you became victim of it. We became so attention to the good and old days. We don't create new ones. Our vision sight capture the percent put vision capture the future and you are not born to live in the past and are uh, stuck. The person because science deal with the vision empire could be is the why vision impact always vision you i to live accounting to vision in our heart not the sink in our thank you for watching like share and subscribe